It's official. The Carolina Panthers' newish owner has set a new record in the NFL for firing the most head coaches in the shortest span of time. Six in less than six years. He's about to be on coach number seven since taking over in 2018. If this level of impatience and meddling is a sign of things to come in the NFL, where owners are less like the Old Testament God, hands off, but will randomly strike people down, and more like Loki, the the god of chaos, daring their teams to overcome their traps, then David Tepper is bravely paving the way. David Tepper, owner of the Carolina Panthers since 2018, took over after the team's founder, Jerry Richardson, was chased out of the league for being a creepy old man. Tepper came in and saved the day, putting an end to workplace harassment before publicly making a play for Deshaun Watson. He keeps a pair of brass testicles in his desk, which he rubs for good luck after making a risky investment. The 66-year-old earned his billions through high-stakes investments on distressed debt, turning other people's bad luck and bankruptcies into pure profit. Unfortunately, the Panthers fan base is now tiring of the man profiting off their bad luck. Ironically, he filed for bankruptcy himself after the deal to build an $800 million practice facility fell through. Ultimately, it would take six months to demolish the Panthers' Rock Hill practice facility and about six years to demolish the Panthers. Tepper's response to angry fans? Go watch soccer and a stain concert. Besides football, we brought in a soccer team that is setting records, okay? We brought music back, not back to Charlotte. There never was music in Charlotte, you know, with concerts. It's been a while. It's been a while since the Panthers made the Super Bowl in 2016 and the playoffs in 2017 with the previous owner. And in case you're wondering, yes, he's also fired two head coaches in two years on his soccer team. He's, at times, eerily echoed Foxborough's biggest fan of Boston Scrod. Football's a mysterious game sometimes. Football a, is a funny, you know, funny business. And he's had some epic showdowns with the press, not like Brandon Staley epic. You can stop asking that question, so you don't have to ask that again. Stop making it about one unit. But they're entertaining. Scott, I read your column, okay? You know better, okay? You know, I could actually, you know, I, I shouldn't say that, but I actually read your columns and I can go back to your columns and regurgitate them. So you can read your own columns, okay, for that answer. In less than six years, he's fired the franchise's winningest and most successful coach in Panthers history, fired the next coach early on in a seven-year deal after saying he'd be there for 30 or 40 years, been sued for racial discrimination by an interim coach, and traded the farm for a QB his head coach didn't want before scapegoating him for that decision. He loves firing head coaches so much, on this last one, he didn't even tell the team they found out on on Twitter. He can't tell the difference between the business world and the football world, much less what it would take to build a winning culture. This hedge fund billionaire with zero football experience might seriously be destroying an NFL franchise out of pure hubris and self-delusion. A head coaching job in the league is one of the rarest and most sought after positions in the entire world. There are only 32 of them and you get millions of dollars when you're fired. But Tepper's insane behavior is somehow making this highly coveted head coaching vacancy too toxic to attract generational talent. How could David Tepper go from practically being gifted an NFL franchise to completely destroying it in only a few years? These are the victims of David Tepper. Even though it has started to get chilly these days, the on-field action is still hot. And that is why I, Wi-Fi Willie, have partnered with DraftKings, an official partner of the NFL, to get you all close to the action. Right now, new customers who bet $5 will get an additional $150 in bonus bets instantly. You can download the DraftKings app right now and use my promo code Wi-Fi Willie. And if you're like me, 
Dean, you have already signed up for DraftKings a long time ago. You can get a no sweat bet. You can get a bonus bet back if your same game parlay or your same game parlay X bet doesn't hit. Max reward limits do apply. But we all love parlay bets, combining multiple bets together for a chance at a fat payout. If DraftKings is not in your state, don't worry, you can still sign up for DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use my promo code Wi-Fi Willie, bet $5 and get $150 back in bonus bets instantly. And always remember to play responsibly. The Carolina Panthers are a unique expansion team with a legendary origin story that only played their first season in 1995. When Panthers fans think of the glory days, they think of two coaches, John Fox and Ron Rivera. Fox led the Panthers to the Super Bowl with quarterback Jake Delhomme in 2003, but then lost to the New England Patriots. Ron Rivera would lead the team to a Super Bowl in 2015, which they lost to Denver. But this season is truly memorable because they only lost one game in the regular season and Cam Newton became the first black quarterback to be unanimously voted NFL MVP of the season. I also would like to thank every person that have doubted me because you made me better. Dad. The only owner the Panthers have ever known was the man that preceded David Tepper, Jerry Richardson. It was not a perfect football team by any means, but they were consistently competitive with a football-minded owner who knew how to stay in his lane. Everybody wants to see you dad. <laughs> and a die-hard fan base who didn't get pushed out of season tickets due to a stadium remodel for soccer. The Panthers only had one season under seven wins in six years prior to Tepper taking over. No one could have predicted how quickly they would crumble. Jerry Richardson, one of only two former players to own an NFL franchise and catcher of a game-winning TD from Johnny Unitas in the 1959 NFL Championship game, was also a dirty old man and kind of a bigot. Richardson had to use his bonus check from the championship game to start the Hardee's fast food empire we know today. He then used his fast food empire riches to apply for an expansion team in North Carolina in the early 90s. Around the same time that Richardson was building the 29th NFL franchise, David Tepper left Goldman Sachs to start his now famous hedge fund, which specialized in distress debt. Let's just say he does well during recessions and bankruptcies. In a a couple of decades, Tepper would get the opportunity of a lifetime from a very distressed Panthers owner. The NFL loved Jerry Richardson when he was tough on the players during the 2011 lockout, but the NFL's corporate sponsors turned on him after he showed obvious disdain for Kaepernick's protest in 2016. Even though Richardson grew up poor and was a former player himself, he was simply too out of touch with corporate social trends in 2017. Luckily for Richardson, he hated email. He preferred sentimental handwritten notes, but would sometimes go way too far and give female employees cash for manicures and new outfits if he disapproved of their appearance. He was definitely an old school dude, apparently everyone in the office referred to him as just Mr. and he would give people unwanted shoulder rubs. One employee accused him of using a slur and there were rumors that he hated dreadlocks. Awkward. Richardson wanted the glory of a legendary founder like George Hollis and so he had a statue of his likeness erected in front of his stadium prior to to the harassment allegations. Even though Tepper was contractually obligated to maintain the statue after taking over, he immediately removed it, telling everyone that he was trying to protect it from angry protesters. Many years have since passed, and let's just say it's still not back up. Even after the Panthers founder passed away in March of 2023, I'm sure Tepper is very upset about its absence. Jerry Richardson was not bankrupt but he was embroiled in controversy. Hence, David Tepper began his grimy foray into the NFL world by repeating his hedge fund success model of parasitically profiting off people in distress. 
Tepper grew up a Steelers fan and was their minority owner for almost a decade before taking over a franchise of his very own. It's safe to say he came into Charlotte looking for his next Mike Tomlin. Speaking as the new owner of the Panthers in the summer of 2018, David Tepper came off as condescending and cringe. The first thing I care about is winning. The second thing I care about is winning. And the third thing I care about is you guys are smart. <laughs> but at least he wasn't asking to see female employees, apple bottom jeans, rear ends on casual Fridays. Fans assumed that Tepper would be a stabilizing presence after head coach Ron Rivera and star QB Cam Newton had reached the playoffs the year prior. Boy, were they wrong. The 2018 Carolina Panthers would end up with a 6-2 record after week 9. However, the defense would not live up to expectations, which led to Rivera switching play callers midseason. Meanwhile, quarterback Cam Newton's shoulder injuries would prevent him from throwing down the field. After week nine, the Panthers would only win one more game and finish with a seven and nine record. The following season would be Ron Rivera and Cam Newton's last. In 2019, Newton would suffer a season ending foot injury in the first two weeks. Rivera didn't stand a chance with Will Greer and Kyle Allen at backup QB. So in week 13, Rivera would be fired after going five and seven. Many fans were upset about this because the Panthers were not technically eliminated from the playoffs and Firing the head coach mid-season is tantamount to eliminating yourself. Tepper actually had the gall to say that he gave it two seasons of extreme patience and self-control before stepping in and shaking things up. Look, I, you know, I came here two years ago. I wanted to show patience on the football side and see how it was going. I just thought it was time, given the way things have gone the last two seasons, to put my stamp on this organization on the football side. He offered generic platitudes about Rivera. Rivera, besides being... Uh, a good coach is one of the finest men I've ever met in my life. Before saying he wanted a modern analytics guy and offensive mind, foreshadowing his preference for a former offensive coordinator to develop an elite rookie quarterback. Modern processes, modern um, analytics, statistics, and the rest of that. After being blasted on Twitter by upset fans, Tepper busted out the classic old boomer insult to anyone with an internet connection, calling them incels in basements. If you're in a basement right now tweeting, come out of the basement, come up there, and get in the light of day. The stupidest part of the most difficult is ever looking at Twitter. Yeah, wouldn't that be? Well, you look at Twitter a little bit too much. No, no, no. You know what? Sometimes I like to get the feel of just sometimes you have to read through the... That, that's uh, cold for too much. Well, that's probably right. You know, sometimes, no, but you got to get through the people in the basement. Cam Newton, unofficial ambassador of the classic Windows hieroglyphics font, Wingding said goodbye to Rivera in the only way he knew how. Tepper ended up hiring Matt Rule on a massive seven-year, $62 million contract as only the fifth coach in Panthers history. Tepper said Rule was someone who could build the organization for the next 30 or 40 years, seriously. And that Tepper and Rule were kindred spirits because they're both sweaty and dressed like shit. Matt Rule had turned around Baylor's team from 1-11 to 11-3 but had almost no NFL experience. Rule had tried to use Teddy Bridgewater in his first season and Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield in his second, only racking up five wins in each. Tepper lost his temper with Rule after the Niners blew the him out in week five, kicking him to the curb while writing him a check for 40 million. He was fired five games into his third season, but hey, Tepper gave him two full seasons, so that looked like an improvement in the patience department. I get asked, you know, you just asked that question of being too patient, and somebody said you're not patient enough, and I said it's, you know, it's like you're, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. Little did we know it wouldn't just be the offense that regressed, but Tepper's self control as well. It was after firing Rule that Tepper started hearing from familiar criticism about his impatience. The Panthers didn't make the playoffs for the fourth straight season, and the buck always stops at the head coach. But high turnover can be severely demoralizing to those who remain and damaging to the culture they're trying to build. Tepper defended his controversial decision and losing seasons in a highly tone deaf way by telling Charlotte residents, at least you have soccer and concerts. And besides football, we brought in a soccer team that is setting records. Okay, and bringing 34,000 and revitalizing the city. We brought music back, not back to Charlotte, there never was music in Charlotte, you know, with concerts. We've won and we've won. 
you know, the place we're not, you know, we'll do better on the football field, you know, in the future. Hey, football fans, why don't you shut up and watch some real football and a freaking Brian Adams show? Everything I do. In 2022, after Matt Rule's departure mid-season, Tepper promoted the defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes, who had been part of Ron Rivera's staff during the Panthers' second-ever Super Bowl appearance in 2016. Well, I would like to see him get a, a, a fair shot, a complete season of it. You know, the drive is there, and I feel like we need to go back to that smash-mouth football that got us to the Super Bowls a couple years ago. Wilkes had been a super-hot commodity for head coaching gigs going into the 2018 season, replacing Bruce Arians in Arizona. He ended up having the worst record in the league, 3-13, and and they fired him after one season. Wilkes floated around the NFL and college teams as defensive coordinator, but returned to the Panthers as secondary coach in 2022. So when Tepper elevated him to interim head coach in the middle of the 2022 season, let's just say he was on a short leash. Wilkes gave them their best season under Tepper with a 7-10 record, 6-6 six six under Wilkes, making them competitive for the first time in a while and winning over the locker room. Wilkes seemed to be putting the team back on track and helping to build a winning culture and fan excitement. But that wasn't enough to earn the top job in Tepper's eyes, and so he axed him. The firing was so bad, Tepper was hit with a discrimination lawsuit. Maybe the previous owner and founder, Jerry Richardson, was inappropriate and politically incorrect, but at least he had a Hispanic head coach, Ron Rivera, and a historic black quarterback quarterback Cam Newton. People complained that the new owner gave lip service to corporate diversity quotas, but didn't seem to follow through in his actions. To add insult to injury, Wilkes is the defensive coordinator for the 49ers and will probably get a ring soon. Enter Frank Reich, the poor guy who had to save the Colts from the carnage wrought by Josh McDaniels' duplicity and Andrew Luck's shocking early retirement prior to Reich's second season. Despite leading the Colts to two playoff appearances in three and a half seasons, he was fired by a recovering alcoholic for a TV broadcaster. Here's the deal, man. None of us are promised a good job. I may be terrible at this. And after eight games, I'll say, God bless you. I am no good. I may be really good at it. I got no idea, but I dang sure ain't gonna back down. Reich had a ring as offensive coordinator for the Eagles in 2018 and was a former player himself. Tepper finally found his offensive guru who would take the necessary time to mentor a talented rookie QB and lead the city of Charlotte to the promised land. Just kidding. He got fired before the end of his first season. The only other head coaches in this century to not finish their first seasons are Bobby Petrino, who resigned after Michael Vick got caught, Nathaniel Hackett, who was only in Denver to get Aaron Rodgers and basically resigned after he couldn't, and Urban Meyer, who lasted two more games than Reich despite publicly cheating on his wife and kicking his kicker in his legs. What was Frank Reich's crime? Well, trading away all of the following year's draft capital, trading away any incentive to tank, and then tanking with the first overall QB in the draft, that is pretty bad. So what happened exactly? Turns out Reich and his quarterbacks coach, Josh McCown, wanted CJ Shroud, but Tepper let them know they were, in fact, taking the undersized but talented Bryce Young. Don't nudge them toward Bryce Young, because you know you did. You know you did. They would have taken C.J. Stroud if you hadn't interfered with the process. Trading away all of their top draft picks in 2024, as well as their top receiver, D.J. Moore, to the Chicago Bears was the ultimate gamble for Tepper. Not as risky as gambling on defaulted home loans in 2008, but still pretty risky. This move guaranteed the Panthers could not gain anything from a disastrous season. So what did they do? As of now, they have one win going into week 13. Tepper reportedly screamed, F in the locker room after their latest loss to the Titans and did what he does best and axed the freaking coach. It's pretty clear that Tepper had impulsively laid ways to the all-star coach and staff since players had to find out about it through social media. Imagine being Bryce Young in demand Bama QB going first overall to a struggling team with a passionate fan base, being undersized behind a regressed totally crap O-line without any top wide receivers capable of getting open and starting your NFL career with a coaching staff that didn't want you and an owner who doesn't understand how to utilize you.
After firing Reich, the finger pointing had already started. Tepper tried to clear his name amid rumors that he prevented Reich and McCown from pursuing Stroud. He said that's fake news. They all wanted Young. Originally, we were going to go to the number two pick, and, and uh, we thought we'd get CJ because we thought the Texans were going to pick Bryce. And listen, we preferred Bryce. He was our number one pick. We had a lot of conviction. In both cases, I supported both choices, okay? I'm just gonna say that I supported both choices. I supported the coaches, I supported the scouts, and I supported uh, Frank Reich, so. Tepper had an attitude with critical reporters at his press conference following the Frank Reich firing. He even blackballed a reporter who responded by writing an article that Tepper failed to fire the right guy himself Burn! But does it even matter at this point? The insanely high expectations of this past offseason, getting the first overall QB in an easy division, have been totally shattered in truly historic fashion. And this is coming from a Raiders fan. Is David Tepper's controlling nature, arrogant attitude, and crippling impatience completely to blame for the Panthers' decline since he took over? Passing on Steve Wilkes definitely looks worse in hindsight today, and going after Young without preparing a roster that would actually utilize him look like huge misses. But it's very hard to succeed in the NFL. But one thing seems certain. Greatness seems to come from stability, and stability only comes with an owner's ability to know when to back off amid fan pressure and despite their own impatience. We've seen the highest ever numbers of coaches fired after their first year or during their first year in the last decade alone. So it seems like this is a broader trend in the league that might spell doom for multiple franchises. Again, this is coming from our Raiders fan. Only time will tell if owners can learn to Jed York it. Jed York who took the anti-Shanahan heat in the latter's first couple seasons and just let it ride. Owners have to know when the axing will improve the team or hurt the team. Maybe in an alternate universe, the Panthers are on their third Super Bowl appearance with Ron Rivera. Regardless, there will be more non-football randoms from private equity or wherever taking over NFL franchises. Let's hope they have the sense to stay in their lanes for the sake of the game. If you want more content like this from me, let me know in the comments below and subscribe so you do not miss the next video. My name is Wi-Fi Willie, peace out, and I hope you have a good one.